So you're all very welcome to uh, November's Policy and Resources Committee meeting here in the Town Hall in Enniskillen. Uh, item one is apologies. So I have apologies from Councillor Barry Michael Duff and Councillor Garvin McPhillips. Is there any other apologies, folks? Oh, sorry, Councillor Rayleigh, of course, yeah. No other apologies. And we have a uh, we have Councillor Warrington online there on on WebEx as well, so that's grand. Okay, so item two was to sign the minutes and confidential minutes of the previous meeting on the eleventh of October, and that's been done there. Uh, item three: any declarations of interest? Councillor Robbins. Thank you, Chair. And it's in relation to six point two on the COVID inquiry. Six point two. Okay, thank you, Mark. Yeah. And the Chief Executive. Yeah. Chair, may I just make a general declaration on behalf of the staff in attendance as there's a number of items of correspondence relating to pay awards? Please. Okay, thank you. Okay, members, move on. Yeah. Okay, so take us into the report saying so. So 4.1 is to consider the report on consultations, and that's paper A. And I've got a Jill and Louise here. Maybe Louise take us through that. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so as noted at the last PR, there are no consultation responses for approval this month. So members are asked to note forthcoming consultations from 2.1 to 2.3. Um, I wish to draw members' attention to 2.3.1 and 2.3 to 2.3.4 regarding the intention to respond to five departmental reven revenue raising consultations, some of which have been published, but most of them haven't. Um, the intention is to hold an online workshop on the 4th of December at 6 p.m. to gather members' views before draft responses are presented to PNR for approval at full council. Okay, that's great, Louise. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Thanks, Chair. I'm happy to, to note the, the consultations, and I just wanted to speak a wee bit on the revenue raising, as you've just mentioned there. Um, I think... I think these revenue raising consultations are a bit of a sham, if I'm honest. Uh, the, the Secretary of State has instructed us that we need to pay more money because our budgets aren't funded properly. And, you know, why are our budgets not funded properly? It's because year on year on year, the Tories have slashed our budgets and cut our public services to the bone. Uh, the fiscal, the, the Department of Finance has recently come out and said that if our budgets had kept up with inflation, it would have a 2.3 billion increase. You know, so that's where our shortfall is. The civil service have said that there's an overspend this year of 1 billion. Water charges is not gonna fix that overspend. You know, this is fantasy stuff coming from the Tories. If the Tories were serious about funding our public services, they would ask themselves, why we're not getting enough funding. The Fiscal Council have come out and said that our objective needs are not being met through the Barnett formula. That needs reformed straight away. You know, water charges and tuition fees, and we've got here the, you know, things like the industrial day rating, they are punitive charges on working and middle income families, families who cannot afford to pay extra at this time, cost of living crisis, you know, it's absolutely shocking that the Tories have gone down this road. And I think that we as a council should just be putting that message out there that this is a sham and that, you know, we need to look at alternative ways of funding our public services and the Tories need to get them get real and catch themselves on. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Dermot. Uh, Councillor Green. Uh, yeah, I suppose it's... it's uh... I'd agree with everything Dermot said there. Um, really, the common denominator nearly in every uh, problem and crisis that we're in is the Tory government. Um, uh, uh, as I call them, the English Tory government, because I believe that's all that's involved in it is English MPs. Um, they, they have no support here. They have no support in Scotland. I believe they have very little support in Wales as well. So, you know, it's the English Tory government that uh, through some formula that was um, arranged in 1704 or something like the union where everyone seems to be tied into uh, the, 
the uh, that the English has complete dominance uh, on on everyone else. It's a, a shocking uh, state of affairs. The just on on raising money, I suppose one of the the things that I think should possibly be looked at, but it's not on this for, uh, format that should be looked at. But one of the things of where uh, if you own a a three million house or a four million house, you're charged the exact same rates as somebody who uh, is has a, a house worth four hundred thousand. Now four hundred thousand in today doesn't equate to that uh, fancy of a house or that big of a house. Uh, but I think it's disgraceful that that people in mansions and uh, that are charged the same as uh, a working family in a 400,000 house. Uh, so that's just one of the things that I wanted to mention. Okay, thank you, Seamus. And I do think that the, that the maximum cap for the rates has been locked at as well to, to be removed, I think. Is that right, Alison? So I think so that's one of the things that's up for up for discussion. Are you happy to second that uh, report, Seamus? Yeah, and we all agreed. Thank you. So 4.2 members is to consider the report on financial matters, paper B, and I've got Jill and Kathleen here with us as well to take us through this. Okay, okay Jill. thank you, Chair. Um, so in terms of um, the report on financial matters, um, the first aspect is the management accounts um, up to the period ending the 30th of September. Um, and so that's six months into our uh, annual budget. So the overall budget for the year was 44.8 million as projected. Um, their projections for six months spend was around 19.6 million and our actual spend is about 18.8 million. So we're looking at a variance of about um, 5%, overall a positive variance in terms of that. So we're living within our budget, which is very good. Um, at this stage, we're not proposing that we would have any environments or transfers of that budget, um, we are adopting a cautious approach. Um, we're six months in, we're coming into the winter period and we still have a significant, um, I suppose, climate of financial volatility. Um, we have significant uncertainty with fuel costs and with heating costs. And I suppose that's one of the primary um, reasons for the variance in that the cost of electricity has significantly come down from what was projected in our estimates. So our estimates um, were set um, at a very high level of rate of electricity, which was the actual cost at that stage. But um, the market has been, been very competitive and, and we have a good uh, fixed rate for that. So that's one, one of the reasons for the, the differences for the variantials. Um, and also contract prices, where we are securing some good deals on some of those contract prices. Um, so in terms of um, really where we're at, if I go into a bit more detail, in terms of the, the variations, the variance and um, where that has come from. So overall, when we, we look um, through the list um, of accounts and across all the different kind centres, um, there are really a variability between some areas of underspend and some areas of overspend in some area. So as I've alluded to, electricity, we're looking at an underspend of about 165,000, um, heating about 85,000. Um, we have had a beneficial assessment of our own rates of council properties, so that's um, led to a positive variance of about 95,000. And there's, in terms of general efficiencies within staffing costs and with timings of appointments and with some vacancies and posts, there's a saving there of about £300,000 at this stage, but we anticipate that that will catch up as the year progresses on. But again, as we have had an outline to briefings now to all parties, staffing costs is something that, that we're looking at very closely. There's some small um, areas of overspend in terms of some of our facilities, some of our repair bills in terms of um, our leisure facilities. Um, and some other aspects in terms of areas where we projected higher income and some of the tourist facilities that that hasn't managed to realize. So that's the position that we're projecting um, after six months and we're looking for um, approval for for those or I'm happy to take any questions. Any hey, members? Go ahead, Councillor Robbins, Mark. Thank you, Jill, and thank you very much for the report. And I mean, looking at it, it's a very positive report and, and it, Tends to suggest that the council's in a very good place because 
by my calculations, even when I look at it and deduct the, the re general reduction in the general grant, we're still at the end of quarter two finishing with the surplus of around 740,000. So that, that's a very positive position to be in. I suppose my first question would be whether you expect or whether finance colleagues expect that to carry through to year end. I, I appreciate it's a very volatile situation, but are we forecasting to be ending in a surplus position? And if we have any indicative or ballpark figures of what that end position may be. And then secondly, Chair, and it's connected to this issue in light, in light of the finance report we've received tonight. And I know this is an issue that my colleague Roy Crawford has, Crawford has raised um, on various occasions before with businesses throughout the town. And I'd like to make a proposal tonight that in light of the finances that we see here tonight, that on the three Saturdays before Christmas, that this council takes a decision to waive car parking charges in the council owned off street car parking, off street car parks. And I appreciate anything agreed tonight will have to be ratified by council. I understand that. So the dates I would be proposing are I'm conscious the council next meets on Tuesday the 5th. So I would be proposing tonight that council waives car parking charges on Saturday the 16th, Saturday the 23rd, and Saturday the 30th, or Saturday the 9th, 16th, and 23rd, sorry. So those three Saturdays okay. before Christmas. Alison, do you want to come in just in that? Yep, certainly, Chair. Note is the, the proposal, it's something we'd have to look at the financial implications of, obviously, and report back. So I don't, it, we would have to report back to the, the, either the council or the committee meeting. It would be contrary to the council's own policy in terms of car parking and other arrangements. Um, so certainly, Chair, we wouldn't be able to take that decision this evening. Let you back in briefly, Mark. Chair, I mean, this is the second time I've made a proposal such as this. I mean, ultimately, as councillors, we are either the decision-making body within this council or we're not. It's not simply good enough that any time a proposal is raised that the standard response be, well, we'll have to go away and we'll look at the figures or there's not time. I would make the proposal. We are looking at a report tonight where the council is and we're ended, the council ended at the end of September with £740,000 additional resource than it had planned. In my opinion, Whatever the cost is, and it would be minimal because it would be three days, three Saturdays in Enniskill and Anoma for all the car parks at the charge, I would make the proposal that it is affordable and that we should take the decision tonight. Okay, Councillor Green, and then come back to the Chief Executive. Thank you. Um, well, as far as I know, we are not a decision making committee. Uh, uh, I believe any decision does have to be ratified at a full council. So even if it was an agreement with uh, uh, Councillor Ovens, uh, we cannot make a decision. That we can make a recommendation to to the full council committee. Yeah. That's all, as far as I or the, to the full council. That's uh, unless I'm I'm wrong on that. The other thing is, uh, I would be a bit wary that uh, the businesses or a lot of the businesses would even. Uh, want this because what has happened in the past I believe is where uh, a lot of the car parking spaces then is taken up by people that parks there all day and that there isn't then uh, people aren't coming and going which shops want them to do uh, so can we just have a comment on that because I, I believe we've had this conversation previously and maybe Alison can can confirm that my memory isn't as good as it used to be, but I, I believe that there was this conversation before and there was some some talk that businesses weren't uh, particularly keen on that because they wanted the car parks being continuously torn over with people coming and going. Thanks, Seamus. Go ahead, Alison. And I suppose, Chair, that's what I meant in terms of it's contrary to the Council's car parking strategy. We have, we have had um, numerous instances over the last number of months alone when there has not been the enforcement of on-street parking in Enniskillen, where it is uh, essentially led to congestion and people parking all day. And the council in its previous considerations in car parking charges, which was in co consultation with the business community, was that there would be a regular uh, circulation or flow. I think the other point, so certainly my understanding uh, of the proposal as presented, it would run directly contrary to anything the council has previously agreed. Um, I think the other point, Chair, that, that is important and um, to clarify for Councillor Ovens, uh, Councillor Green is correct, this is not, it's obviously a recommending committee, the Council would have to ratify it. However, 
you cannot take a decision with financial implications without first of all knowing what those implications excuse me are i'm struggling with laryngitis I, and i don't think it's acceptable to say whatever the cost it's something that can be accommodated that information is not before members we can certainly find that information and report it to you and then you can consider the implications thanks alison uh, councillor warrington you're waiting a wee while there go ahead victor thank you i'm a very patient guy um on the back, I, I appreciate what the what the um, chief executive is saying there that we need to obviously get the costs. But I certainly uh, uh, we're talking that it's it's something we haven't do we've voted against in previous years. But we're in a different situation now this year. This will be the sort of forced full year that we've had very little uh, impact of COVID. Um, and with that, uh, I know other councils are, are adopting this. And, you know, we do get a lot of stick from businesses uh, within the area that we don't do enough to help them and to encourage shoppers to come in. I think it's certainly up to the, the, the actual um, stores themselves to, to ensure the management within the stores to ensure that their own staff doesn't abuse the situation um, and uh, that certainly should, should should ease that burden a bit uh, and I think certainly with the cost of living and with, with retail struggling at the minute and with rates and everything else I think it's something we need to seriously look at and with that uh, I second uh, Councillor Alvin's proposal and that we look at it, uh, seriously look at it going forward um and see what way the figures stack up thank you thank you uh, victor and just before i bring in councillor mahan if i can just invite uh, jill to comment just on the on the uh, figures as they are now and what they may be in six months time in terms of the estimates and stuff yes uh, thank you chair so as a i'd outlined that we're taking a cautious approach really just through the volatility um in terms of our analysis of the profile of spend in this year to date, we're moving closer to projected profile spend and a number of the key, the big spend areas. So parks, estates and property community services, when we look month and month, we're tracking closer to projected spend. And I suppose that's influenced our decision in terms of maintaining the status quo after six months and not proposing any significant environments. We do anticipate a small the, the position will continue, the position we have, and, and the end of year position will be similar to this position that we have at this stage. But there is, I suppose, significant uncertainty within that that um, leads us to make the recommendation that we wouldn't be doing anything with that underspend at this stage, and that, that will be our considered opinion. Thank you, Jim. Okay, Councillor Mahan, go ahead, David. Uh, thank you, Chair. And I suppose I have to be careful. I won't be voting on this just with being having a business in the time, but I just want to give, I suppose, a bit of experience from that. Uh, I know most days, you know, during the week now, if I come into, you know, I can't even get parked in the car park. Um, whereas I do partially agree with what Councillor Ovens more than saying it would be a nice thing to do for the businesses to support the business. I completely agree with that. But I think the issue is that more customers won't be able to get into the shops because the car parks will be filled. They're, they're currently filled, and it might be useful to know the, if we have statistics on that um, to see where that goes. Well, the, the, the bids uh, organisation, have they made any calls for this or had any correspondence with them as they represent the businesses to, in the totality in the town? And I say, if there's a voter, I won't be taking no part. That's no good, David. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Chair, sorry, I'm, I'm certainly not aware of bid making any representations in, in this regard. Uh, I know the only discussion that there has been in recent years in relation to waived car parking uh, charges was during the uh, waived or free car parking was during the works on the Enniskillen public realm uh, when there was the specific impact around the diamond uh, and associated areas and it was suggested that that might be an incentive but following discussions with the business community for the reasons already stated it was agreed that that actually wouldn't be helpful and our focus would be on providing events and other activities which is what we did thank you Alison. and sorry we do have the statistics of usage which we can provide okay we got councillor dehan on webex there go ahead josephine thank you chair good evening members and thanks jill for your report 
uh, which is very encouraging. And uh, just in respect of Councillor Oven's proposal, on the face of it, you know, it, it's a very attractive proposal. And there's not one of us uh, uh, members who would would not wish to do something to support our business community. But Chair, two points I want to make. First of all, uh, I, I agree um, with Councillor Green that in the past, um, to offer free parking, unfortunately, does not uh, facilitate rapid turnover of car parking spaces, which is really what, what traders want around the Christmas uh, season. So people coming into town, you know, picking up their turkey or their hams or whatever they want, and then going off again quickly. Uh, so I, I don't think that it's going to help businesses necessarily if we, um, you know, abolish car parking charges on those days as a business incentive. And the other point I want to make is that whilst Jill has given us a very favourable uh, report tonight, you know, we have to be very cautious about um, quickly spending what we might regard as a windfall, because really the last thing that we want to be doing when we're striking the rate is to see unaffordable rates hikes in our council area. So for that reason, I would urge caution. And I just think that we should be quite prudent with our spending at this time. But I do appreciate the sentiment of Councillor Oven's proposal and I support the sentiment, but I don't think it's an appropriate action at this particular time, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dehan. Uh, Councillor Green, I'd like you in again briefly there. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate you letting me in. No, um, I thought this uh, tactic of bouncing the legs of this had finished uh, when the last mandate was over and after the results of the election, but this uh, if this was a serious proposal and not political shenanigans, uh, I believe it would have been made two or three months ago. Uh, but uh, three or four weeks out from from uh, uh, Christmas, and this has to be rat would have to be ratified in a, almost uh, the day before or a couple of days before it would come into action. I don't think it's a serious proposal. And uh, I wouldn't be comfortable uh, supporting it. Uh, so if if the Ulster unions want to make this proposal, maybe they could make it now for next year, and so that the uh, facts and figures could be in front of us uh, when we're actually making the decision, and not uh, be bouncing these type of decisions on before. And I'm quite shocked that uh, Councillor Warrington would have anything to do with this because he knows what was taking place in the last mandate with this type of stunts. And uh, so I'll leave it at that. Okay, Councillor Warrington, I see you looking in. I'll let you in again very briefly. Go ahead. First of all, it's not uh, everything that the Austrian Unionist Party does always seems to be in certain councillors' views a stunt uh, for politicising to, to get publicity. I can assure him that this is not. This is this has been discussed at our group uh, recently. We're not doing a knee-jerk reaction. We have probably approximately two and a half, three weeks to our full council meeting uh, before we actually sign this off. Um, if if it is going to be an option, so therefore we we have certainly we have that period of time to get the figures that we need. And, and to be able to to look to be able to look at uh, if it is a viable possibility or not. Um, our, our what we are trying to do is to help businesses that are struggling. No other reason. It's not a political stunt. Um, and I'm, I'm disappointed that yet again that has been true up. That 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 uh, everything we say seems to be a political stunt. I can assure uh, the previous councillor that it's not. Uh, so I'll leave it at that, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Warrington. 
And I'm just going to seek some guidance just from the Chief Executive in terms of the competency of the proposal. You, you, he's looking to obviously uh, have free car parking charges. That's a proposal on the three Saturdays before Christmas. Uh, and I think you said that, that you know we don't have the financial information that before to make such a decision. So we'll just get clarity on that, Alison, before we can move forward. That's correct, Chair. Certainly for you to, to be able to take a, a decision in relation to that, in my opinion, and in the context of the standing orders, you would need to have the information before you, and you don't have that. I am not sure whether Councillor Owens is proposing that we obtain that information for you to be able to consider it at the Council meeting in December. But what I would note, in, and we can certainly seek to do that, but I think other members have referenced the lead-in time in terms of the feasibility uh, of the, particularly the first date, I think would be challenging in that regard. But we can certainly seek the info, we can, sorry, acquire and collate the information so that it could be considered at the council meeting. But I don't see how you can take a decision of the financial magnitude without actually knowing the import of that okay. or the uh, impact of that decision. Okay. In light of that, Councillor Robbins, are you happy to maybe amend your proposal and seek the figures? for the council meeting before us to make a decision. Otherwise, I'll have to rule your proposal incompetent. Go ahead there, Mark. Thank you, Chair. And yes, as I said in my opening remarks, I mean, any conversation, any discussion, or any decision we take tonight, I've always recognised the subject to yeah. final sign off on December 5th, but my proposal would still stand in that I would like to proceed as proposed, but subject then to final provision of figures come Tuesday the 5th of December, because I appreciate that this will be a full council decision rather than a committee decision. But I would still like to make the proposal tonight that we proceed with the preparation of this, or proceed with a broad intent of our broad intent of our direction before final sign off come fifth of December. Okay. And that's seconded by Councillor Warrington. So is the chamber agreed? I'm oh, sorry, Councillor Donnelly I didn't see Amory. Thanks, Chair. I think we'd be we would be asked to vote on something that we don't have the information yeah. on. I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah. I'm very much in favour of the, the spirit of it, Absolutely. but I'm not comfortable in spending money that we don't even know how much it is. We're coming into a rates estimates process coming up. I don't think we should be considering blowing money just for the sake of three days, and we don't even know how much it would cost. I think it's. I would consider it reckless without knowing the detail, so I wouldn't be yeah. comfortable voting on that. And just if I can just speak as a councillor on this as well, you know, I'd also share your sentiments. You know, I do appreciate the sentiment behind it, but I would like to also uh, see the costs and obviously the be clear advice from the chief executive in terms of, of what we should do and what we can do, you know, as councillor. So um, I wouldn't be able to support as a councillor the proposal just for that reason, but happy, would be happy to seek the figures if you were if you were to amend that proposal, but I can't obviously accept it. I'll give you an opportunity to amend it, Mark. Okay. I, I mean appreciate everything everything we've decided tonight or talked about tonight is subject to the 5th of december anyway so even if we did take a decision tonight it's subject to the 5th of december so i would like to make a proposal that the figures be gathered and be provided before december 5th in order to allow a full council decision on december 5th okay okay thank you and councillor warrington are you happy to to second that uh, as amended yes chair thank you victor and members are we all agreed with that okay i've got no dissent so that's all agreed uh, can I get a proposal and seconder, please, for the, the report then? So, Councillor Donnelly and Councillor Broth. Thank you, Singer, in there. <laughs> We're all agreed. Okay, so that takes us on then. So, to our monthly procurement and tenders report, paper C. Uh, Jill, is it maybe one of those? It's primarily for noting members. There is a re recommendation there for a decision, but primarily it's for it's for noting. Um, yes, it's just the standard report in terms of the tenders um, that had been assessed and the proposal to award um, within the monthly period. So it's, it's really just for. Okay, thank you, Jill. Review on that. Can I get a proposal and seconder in the absence of any questions? Councillor Mahan and Councillor Hawkes. Thank you. Are we all agreed? Great, thank you. So moving on to 4.4, and asked to consider the staff matters report, paper D. And Thelma, if you want to just take us through this, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, just two items for information, Chair. The first one relating to our regular annual fee for the Northern Ireland Civil Service Pension Scheme, uh, which we still have 25 employees who are members of that scheme. And then the second item, Chair, is to, uh, to provide you an update in relation to the national pay negotiations and to confirm that the national pay agreement for 2023 has now concluded. 
Um, so that concludes all paid negotiations um, for this year. And the summary really of that is that the majority of our paying uh, scales will increase by £1,925 per annum. Um, and then some of the more uh, higher pay scales are increasing at a percentage of 3.88% and 3.50%. So uh, in summary, Chair, the pay agreements over the last two years have resulted in our lowest paid employees seeing a pay increase of 22% from the national negotiations. And when you add on top of that, the local pay negotiations, you add about a further three to three and a half percent in relation to the lower paid workers. So uh, an average of around 25% pay increase over the past two years. Um, there's further information attached in the appendices with that, just in relation to how the agreement was reached. You will note that um, one of the trade unions in the national negotiating framework uh, didn't accept the agreement, but with the constitution there, you can have agreement, and as has, has happened in the past two years as well, um, with two of the trade unions accepting the agreement. So, Chair, all of the information is attached there in the appendices, and uh, those two items are for noting. So it's the payment of the annual civil service pension schemes centralisation services fee and the local government services pay agreement for 2023. Thank you, Sama. Councillor Mahan, David. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and thank you uh, for the report there. Do, do we know what this is going to cost, the top figure for this? Um, and maybe it's in there somewhere, but I didn't just see it buried in there. Chair, it was budgeted for at that amount, so it would be slightly, slightly more of a budget provision. So it's it was exactly uh, within the amount that was um, estimated in the annual estimates. That's, that's okay, thank you. Okay. Can we have a proposal on second to the end? So for that report, please, Councillor Brown. Oh, sorry, David. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. Just to propose and just to suppose to welcome the progress there in the negotiations that you know finally that employees are happy enough with the pay deal that they've received. It's a shame that it took so long to get there, yeah. but it's okay in the end. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Dermot. And have you a seconder? I'm Marie Donnelly, Councillor Donnelly. That's great. Thank you. We're all agreed. Okay, so that takes us on to 4.5, and that is the Director's Report, Paper E. And let Jill take us through this, please, Jill. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, so there are two items um, in terms of discussion. So the first is um, seeking a recommendation to approve um, a new policy in terms of assistance dogs. So this is something that has an issue that has come up on a few occasions within the Council um, in terms of... Uh, assistance dogs um, and to ensure that we have very clear guidelines in circumstances where um, perhaps citizens want to bring pets into the venues um, that aren't properly trained assistance dogs. Um, so this uh, policy is to clarify um, and support those who use assistance dogs and also to support our staff with a consistent approach across the council. And we're seeking a, a recommendation to approve the adoption of this policy. Um, the second item is around um, the new complaints uh, handling procedure for local government. Um, so as um, members may be aware, the public sector ombudsman has developed a new complaints model handling procedure for local government, which will be rolled out across all organisations, but councils are first to go uh, within that. And we will start to implement that procedure from January of next year. Um, it will mean um, that complaints will move to a two-stage handling process. Um, and then if they're not resolved at that stage, they will be progressed to review by the public sector ombudsman. There are a number of changes, and I suppose one of the, the biggest changes is that there will there is no requirement for formal reporting, tracking, and um, continuous improvement in terms of performance with relation to complaints. So on an annual basis, um, officers will be bringing a, an annual summary report of the complaints on an annual basis to uh, members for scrutiny and approval. Um, and all this will be the same as all councils, and that report will be both submitted to the Ombudsman, but also published on the council website. So that first report will be about 18 months time um, when we have run through um, the first uh, iteration or the first year of rollout of this procedure. And there's also a requirement to 
report on a three months basis to um, the management team in terms of complaints um, and particularly with a focus on resolution, identifying trends uh, and resolving any issues that come up. So there's very detailed guidelines in terms of the procedure has been prepared. We've rolled out um, training to staff and are continuing to roll out continuing training to staff across the organisation and there will be new guidelines on our website for our citizens to, to engage in that process. Okay, Jill, thank you. Uh, Councillor Brown, Dermot. Thanks, Chair. Just have a question around the, this assistant dog policy. Um, I see in one of the examples given that a uh, to use the word assistance cat. So it's not just dogs, I'm assuming. So why was assistance dog picked as the title then? You know, it seems to be a wee bit misleading if it's all animals, really. Thanks. Right, you want to that yes, I can pick up. So absolutely, I suppose dogs are predominantly the um, most common type of assistance animal um, and that um, that staff are familiar with in terms of guide dogs, in terms of hearing loss or whatever. But um, in exceptional circumstances, other types of animals, and we've seen examples um, of um, where um, there has been the need for this this type of guidelines for other types of animals. So that's included within our policy that, that it, whilst the policy to raise awareness of the policy is for assistance dogs, it covers all assistance animals. Okay, thank you, Jill. Thanks, Dermot. Councillor Donnelly, Anne-Marie. Thank you, Chair. And has Dermot uh, proposed the recommendation or? Not yet. No, I'll, I'll propose the recommendation there. Uh, I'd welcome the adoption of the dog assistance policy or the animal assistance policy. I think it's good. Anything that improves accessibility for people that have additional needs. I think that's excellent to have that in place. And I have a question in relation to the complaints procedure. I suppose is what type of reporting do you imagine or is there a format? For the annual report, is it going to be the number of complaints? Is it going to be broken down into the type of complaints? Again, as you say earlier, for the quarterly returns for senior management to identify trends, is there ways that we can improve? Just to think of what the format would be like. Um, <clears throat> uh, yes, it will um, It will cover um, the time frame within which complaints are met. So first stage and second stage. Um, the nature of complaints, mainly which um, service area they are about um, and what essentially um, Lipso have moved towards is the the model that in Scotland that they already have um, so we can see from their annual reports the kinds of information that they report annually so it'll be broken to kind of have we met our complaints time frames in which areas lessons learned is a key one and kind of continuous improvement piece so that's that will prove to be very useful data and all councils will be reporting on exactly the same metrics. Amory, so proposed by Councillor Donnelly. No other indications. Have we a second of that report, please? Councillor Hawks, thank you, Shirley. And we all agreed? All agreed. OK, thank you. So that takes us on then so to uh, the Chief Executive's Director reports. Um, so I'll just hand over to Alison, take us to 5.1 and 5.2. Thank you, Chair. Just in relation to 5.1, a verbal update in the first instance for the Rural Affairs Subcommittee meeting held on the 2nd of November. The minutes will come as normal to our meeting in December, but it's really just subject to council ratification uh, at the December meeting that we would progress a couple of actions. Uh, firstly, Chair, Councillor Withers has been uh, nominated as Chair of the Subcommittee. The terms of reference and work plan have been agreed. And there were two specific recommendations. The first was that the subcommittee would invite representatives from the Department for the Economy to attend the next meeting uh, of the subcommittee, which is scheduled for, excuse me, January, to provide an overview of project stratum as we're moving towards the conclusion of that project. And the second recommendation uh, from the subcommittee was that we would make representations to Mid Ulster District Council to consider opportunities for joint resourcing uh, for consideration of statistics of uh, our areas of work of mutual interest. And I think from informal conversations, Chair, that's something that Mid Ulster would look favourably upon. So I'd say the detail will follow next month, but it's really just to be able to get those actions progressed, please. Okay, and you require a proposal and seconder for that report, Alison, yeah. Okay, uh, can we get a proposal and seconder, please, for that, members? Councillor Hawkes, yeah. You seconder, Councillor Dehan, thank you, Josephine. And we're all agreed. So, sorry, Chair. Yes, go ahead, Josephine. Excuse me, Chair. No, Chair, I, I wasn't actually at the meeting, Chair. 
so I'm not able to to second it. But what I wanted to ask was, I I um I don't know whether the meeting was finished at about six o'clock. I didn't send apologies because I had hoped to join, but I was delayed and I didn't try to join until around six, and then I didn't get in. It just said host will admit you. So I don't know. Perhaps the meeting was over at six. I, yeah, I just yes, wondered. Sure. I, sorry, Doctor or Councillor, can I can clarify on that? Yes, it finished in and around by ten to six, five to six. Okay. So, okay. so that would be right. That that that's fine. Thank you for the clarification. And Chair, unfortunately, I'm not able to second. Thank you. Okay. I don't think you actually have to be an attendee at the meeting. We're just seconding the update, uh, Councillor Dean, if you're happy. Or oh yes, I can else? do that, Chair. Thank you. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you, Josephine. And we're all agreed, members. Yeah. Okay. That's great. So that takes us on to five point two, and that's the Chief Executive's report, and that's paper F. Yes, Chair, so a number, I suppose, of just various items here, and I'll just go briefly through. The first is the Southwest Acute Hospital Strategic Development Group. We've reported uh, the minutes uh, and terms of reference through the Health Subcommittee, which would be our normal reporting channel. But this is in relation, Chair, to the continued participation on the group, and I've set the context out in the report. I've also noted that I did speak to the Council Chair uh, prior to his departure for China, so um, both of us have found the, the previous two meetings constructive and providing useful opportunity for the sharing of information, but obviously uh, we will implement any uh, option that members prefer. We've recently adopted motion chair on an economic and inward investment working group, suggesting in the report that in the first instance we would just have a, 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 an informal um, meeting before the end of November. I'm just conscious the breadth of this work could be quite significant and really to get views uh, on a cross-party basis of the areas of focus that we should have and potentially some views as well around membership. So the intention is that if we got that meeting convened uh, before the end of the month that we would report more formally uh, to the December meeting. So suggesting one nominee per, per party on that base, that initial meeting. Um, suggestion there, Chair, just regarding the proposed archiving of legacy council photographs and memorabilia. We are running out of space uh, in both buildings and we're suggesting that appropriate and sensitive recognition would be given to the memorabilia of both legacy councils. Not sure what those proposals would be yet. We would need to do some work. We'd obviously consult with members on it. Um, and we're working on the basis that the space we currently have would be fully committed by the end of next year and well before the end of this mandate. So again, hoping that the, the council would agree with this approach and that we would look at some options and bring those back into members. Um, we had discussions, Chair, previously on the healthcare motion that was adopted in December 2022. I've noted previously we've been having some difficulties around facilitation for this work. And they've included with the report um, a, a re very recent report completed by Fermanagh Trust, who have done quite significant research, consultation and engagement in healthcare related issues, particularly in the southwest of Northern Ireland and with, a, I suppose, a very particular focus on our own district, suggesting that that may uh, form a suitable basis for a, a briefing for members and to agree next steps around how that motion could be realised. We've been asked by our two members on the SOM Association to find out some details as they had received no notifications or programme of activity um, th this year or indeed last. It, it took quite some time to, to get the information chair, but it's included in the report and we'd be suggesting in light of this and the fact that neither of our reps were invited to the meeting in September that we would withhold the subscription this year, uh, but consider it again for the next financial year. And then two items for information. Firstly, the final outturn uh, of the local government election, the budgetary details are provided. And lastly, on the electoral office kiosks. So this is the something that we've made representations about. We actually have two kiosks in storage. However, we do require the electoral office staff to move them to preferred locations. So subject, and I'm sure we will find a, a suitable way forward with the electoral office for that chair, we would intend to do a promotion or an engagement campaign uh, for people to, to register. Um, and then just the recommendations are as presented, but happy to take any queries, Chair. Okay, thank you, Alison. There's a fair bit of stuff on that, so thanks for that. Okay, uh, Councillor Brown, Dermot. Thanks, Chair. I'm happy to propose um, the report and just wanted to touch briefly on the report done by the Fermanagh Trust on the, the healthcare situation in, in Fermanagh and Oma. Um, a very, very significant report and highlighted 
a number of severe challenges that we have locally, um, particularly around the recruitment and retention of healthcare staff, particularly in our hospitals, but also the GP crisis, which you know we all know that, that we're running out of GPs as it is, and it's only going to get worse over time as GPs begin to retire. So I think I may make a proposal that we invite the Fermanagh Trust to brief the Council on this report, uh, just so we can chat, sort of talk to them about it and get further information. Yeah. Great, Dermot, thank you. Uh, Councillor Green, Shimmers. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, first thing, um, just wanted to uh, nominate uh, Councillor Michael Dove for the Economic and Inward Investment Working Group. That's uh, it's only one per party, yeah. Yes, and Chair, so just to clarify, it's only for an initial meeting. I'm not okay. suggesting that'll be the long term membership, so oh, it's okay. just for an initial engagement. Please. Okay, uh, just on uh, what uh, Councillor Brown mentioned there in relation to Fermanagh Trust, yeah, that's uh, that's great and it would be interesting, but uh, we seem to be now. Uh, Maybe suggesting that possibly they facilitate the 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 to progress with the motion. Has nothing else been done around this? I was under the understanding that we had been working on this all along, but it would almost suggest that we have uh, very little work done on on progressing this, and that we are. Uh, jumping on the coattails of Fermanagh Trust now, which I have no problem with if it's the best solution and it's the best, but uh, is, is, is that really all that's been done? Sorry, Chair, no, happy to clarify. No, that's, that's not the case. We have, from a council perspective, there are a number of actions associated with the motion. There was the engagement and correspondence with the department but allied health bodies, GP and associated federations, which we have done. There is also the research base on our own health programmes and health inequalities, which is complete. And they, if you like, the final element or what I'm describing as the final element, Chair, was the potential of a hosting of a workshop or a conference, specifically about bringing interest groups together, including trade unions, about how the health situation could be improved. That is something, and certainly my understanding from even when the first motion or when the motion was first proposed, we will require assistance to do and it is really that latter part and um, we so we have our body of work ready to present we can do that certainly in conjunction or or separately from the Fermanagh Trust but it's really to get the final engagement event and the facilitation around that okay thank I, you. I should know chair sorry we did also seek to engage with other independent facilitators but they, they were not in a position to do the work and we've been doing that over a number of months thanks Alison thanks Seamus uh, Councillor Warrington on Webex, go ahead there, Victor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a couple of things on that. Well, first of all, if we're nominating uh, a person to from our party to sit uh, on this working group, uh, I nominate uh, Councillor Diana Armstrong. Um, and the other issue I just wanted to highlight was and asked the question: um, Did the SOM Association give any indication why our two members? Uh, were not included in their invitation to their September meeting? No, Chair, nothing definitive. Um, they, they noted they hadn't been invited. My understanding is we, were, we weren't the only council who were not invited to the meeting. That, that's okay, thank you. Okay, Victor, thank you. Uh, got Councillor Dehan there on, on WebEx. Thank you, I'm mute there. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alison, for your report. And, uh, you know, I do think that this is a very important development. Um, the future of the Southwest Acute Hospital is of vital importance to this area, to Fermanagh and to Oma and District. And so, therefore, you know, it's, it's really vital that we play our part in ensuring that that hospital retains its acute status, that it provides uh, as many services as possible um, and that uh, we can enhance service delivery where possible. Um, I'd like to second Councillor Brown's proposal that we invite the Fermanagh Trust to meet with us. Um, I think that they do excellent work 
And the points they raise here are, are certainly very, very significant in a wide range of area. You know, Chair, that my main area of expertise is in primary care and uh, there is a real crisis here. So I think that, um, that, you know, we need action. We definitely need actions. Uh, we're, we're, we, we raise concerns all the time and we have sought to have actions implemented. But, you know, so far our pleas have fallen on deaf ears, certainly in respect of primary care services delivery. So, you know, I, I certainly would be um, very supportive of anything that we can do uh, to move those issues forward. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Josephine. Uh, Councillor Mahan, David. Uh, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I'll, uh, if it's OK, I'll nominate myself to the, the working group, please. And secondly, just following on from Councillor Warrington on the, the SOM Association, uh, w would it be the case that we didn't get notification because we hadn't paid? Would that be the case? No. It wouldn't have been due earlier in the year and then they missed us out. I'm just wondering, would that possibly be the reason? No, no, Chair. So, firstly, we only, we've made our nominations after the annual meeting and we've only received uh, the subscription subsequent to that and our own members had said following their nominations at the annual meeting, if we could please check the status of the SOM Association, because in previous years there, there seemed to have been a, a lack of communication, which I think had certainly in and around 2020, 2021 may have been impacted by COVID, but they were aware from discussions with colleagues and other councils that others were being invited. So no, we've paid up to date except for this year. So no, no, I think it was, they, they indicated some sort of an oversight. Um, they were aware of our members and they didn't indicate there was anything about the finances was of concern. It's a bit disappointing that if they're not inviting members, they should be there. You know, as this council or other councils, it's not good practice really, is it? Okay, thank you, David. Okay, so we've got a proposal from Dermot there and that was seconded by Councillor Dehan. And then if I just get a proposal and second her, please, for the report. Councillor Amory Donnelly, you second her. Councillor Shimmer Green. Thank you, folks. And we all agreed. Okay, Alison, so if you can take us through the correspondence, there's a few items of other correspondence as well. Should we go through all them, please? Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, but the first is a response from the head of the civil service, and this is regarding the council's concerns about the Northern Ireland multiple deprivation measures and specifically how deprivation in rural areas is being measured. I think it's quite a positive response, Chair, from, from the head of the civil service, albeit noting um significant financial challenges ahead but an undertaking that uh, hopefully when the executive is up and running again that this the representations from our council will be considered so really okay. just for noting that's great so just for noting members can i get a proposal and seconder please councillor Dermot brown and the uh, councillor mahan david thank you okay Thanks, Chair. The next item is really just for information, the next details of the module, what will be module five of the COVID-19 public inquiry. Just remind members, any representations that local government has made in the past has been through NILGA, which is the Northern Ireland Local Government Association, and our expectation is that will continue if any uh, specific representations are required. Okay. Again, just for noting, so proposal and seconder, please. Uh, Anne-Marie Donnelly, Councillor Donnelly, and Councillor McNulty. Thank you. Okay, Alice. Also for noting, Chair, just the uh, NILGOSC annual report, associated accounts and audit letter, please. Okay, and again, just for noting, so, proposer, uh, Councillor Hawkes, seconder, please. And Councillor McNulty, thank you, Clet. Chair, we then have four items of correspondence members in your other folder. Um, the first is from the NAC, the National Association of Councillors, and this is regarding economic development workshops which are to be held to you'll see two and three there was one session before the local government elections in may and um, so this is following on they are free of charge uh, to attend and it would just be travel costs the 19th of january in belfast the 26th of january in derry londonderry so just not sure chair if there's any desire or nominations okay if there's no way uh, nominations i'm happy to take a proposal second or then folks uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Warrington. Go ahead, there, Victor. It's okay. Um, can I propose, uh, Councillor Diana Armstrong, uh, to uh, attend uh, either or or, or both um, those workshops? I'm not sure if they're both uh, both the same format. Um, and I will propose the the uh, open of this correspondence as well. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you, Victor. Okay. And get a seconder for that. Okay, Councillor Green. Yeah. Um, can I just uh, leave it that uh, we will send in uh, names if anyone's interested from the, the group to uh, uh, no later than tomorrow. If if we're not heard from tickets, there's nobody interested in go. Get on. Ah, yeah. So, so I think the council, council meeting's time enough, even. Okay, that's great. Uh, Councillor Mahan? Yes, Chair. Uh, we do the same. If that's okay, we'll let you know in December. Absolutely. I'll just get a seconder for that there, please. Uh, Councillor Mahan, for that report. Okay, go ahead, Alison. Yes, Chair. Just uh, the next item is just Nilga's update on their current work programme and items of er areas of interest. So, again, just for information. Just for noting. Okay. A proposal, please, and seconder to note that. Councillor Brough and Councillor Amri Donnelly. Chair, thank you. The next item is from the Electoral Office and um, just maybe to note, Chair, this has been communicated by the uh, Chief Electoral Officer to each of the, the parties, uh, but it's the arrangements that are in place if a, a councillor resigns. And I suppose it is just worth noting there is certainly uh, maybe a clarity brought to this matter now by the Chief Electoral Officer's view. Uh, in essence, the date of the 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 date that I or colleagues would receive a notice of resignation is the date that it takes effect. So you can't future proof or put it some time down the line. Um, so that just has an impact in the context of the overall timeline. So really just for information as a courtesy, and it has been communicated formally to the political parties by the Chief Electoral Officer. Okay, thanks, Alison. Councillor Green? Yeah, yeah, just to clarify, would uh, that have been... Uh used different by parties or independents previously you know or is this just to tidy it up and it has never been a factor but uh no, no chair it would be certainly my understanding pretty much across all of the councils the interpretation would have been and we would have applied this if councillor x submitted let's say gave their letter of resignation to me today but said it will take effect from the 30th of november we would notify the electoral office on the 30th of November of the intent. And um, this requires us to notify the electoral office today. So it, it is different. And from memory, there are 14 days once a party nominee uh, would vacate their seat um, for the new selection process to be put in place. So it certainly tightens things up, but it, it avoids any ambiguity, that's for sure. Okay. Just get a proposal and second for that there, please. Councillor Green and a seconder. Councillor Hawks, thank you, folks. And lastly, Chair, and this only came in just immediately before the meeting, and it really just applies uh, for Councillor Hayes as one of our, our diversity ambassadors, champions. It's notification and an invitation to an equality and diversity event uh, on the 29th of November in Craig Avon Civic Centre. I haven't had a chance to speak to Councillor Hayes yet, so I'm not sure of her own availability for it, but subject to her being available, Chair, it would just be for that to be an approved duty, please. Okay, and I'll propose and seconder for that, please. Councillor Amory Donnelly and Councillor McNulty. Okay, that's the correspondence, Alison. Okay, I have one piece of AOB, uh, which I'll take under under the part two, it's from Councillor Green, so we'll take under part two. So moving then, so on to part two, can I get a proposal and seconder to go into committee, please? Councillor Green and Councillor Hawks. Thank you, folks. A few minutes there, we get ourselves tightened up here.
Okay, and that's what's back on there now. So, just ask the Chief Executive to summarise part two, please. Thank you, Chair. While in committee, the Council considered the committee considered a report on confidential staff matters and a report on confidential options appraisal of legal services and agreed a recommendation and also in related to, to general administrative uh, procedures and matters in the Council as well, Chair. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Alison. And I get a proposal and second for that report, please. Councillor Brown and Councillor Amory Donnelly. We're all agreed. Okay, members, that's us. Takes us up to to close the meeting. So thanks you all for coming in and safe home. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Chair.